this guitar is called Pearl. And Pearl is a special guitar to me. It's a Gibson jazz guitar. The thing that makes this special is that the guitar once belonged to my Uncle Bernie, who was an important mentor in my life. I have uh, two uncles who really were one of the major reasons that I started playing guitar in the first place. And uh, I had this daydream after my uncle passed away that you know maybe someday I would meet somebody who had one of my uncle's guitars and and he would give it to me and uh, it would be an arch top jazz guitar and that's what this is so uh, a few months ago th that daydream more or less came true I wasn't given the guitar but a friend of the family who was also a, a guitar student with my uncle sent out an email and said, hey, I've got one of Bernie Evans's guitars and I'm getting ready to sell it. Would anybody in the family like to keep it in the family? And I said, me, and uh, <clears throat> got in touch with him and uh, found out that he had bought the guitar in the 1970s at some point. I had no idea he even had the guitar uh, all those years. And uh, obviously I ended up buying it. The reason that <clears throat> I wanted this guitar and that it's so significant to me is that my Uncle Bernie was an important mentor in my life in a couple of ways. And I'll get to that in just a second, but I need to tell you a couple of things about him that I think the world needs to know. My Uncle Bernie had an incredible sense of humor and wit. And um, he was, for example, the first person that I ever saw that took a toilet seat and made it into a guitar. He did that when I was a kid. I remember seeing it in the music store where he worked. But he also, um, later in life, still had that sense of humor. And he got to know a hospice chaplain in his last weeks and um, befriended this chaplain. And at one point he told him a joke and said, at my burial, I want you to tell this joke. And I'm going to tell it to you now. So there was this guitar player who died and he went to heaven. He gets up there at the pearly gates and St. Peter's there to meet him and goes, Hey, we're so glad you're here. It's awesome that you're up here in heaven. Look over there. You see that mansion? That's yours for all eternity. And the guitar player goes, Wow, a mansion. This is the best gig I ever had. And he's off to his mansion. <clears throat> so, right behind him, in the line, is a pastor who's just come up to heaven, and the pastor's thinking, wow, guitar player gets a mansion. Man, I, I might have a castle or something, you know, palace. And uh, St. Peter welcomes him, says, oh, we're so glad you're here. It's great that you're up here in heaven. Look over there. You see, <clears throat> we have prepared for you that little shack. That's yours for all eternity. And the pastor goes, what? I was a pastor for decades. I mean, I preached the Bible. I served the church. I told people about Jesus. And um, this guitar player comes up here, probably never been to church. And he gets a mansion. And, and I get a little shack. What's with that? And Peter says, yeah, okay. You know, it's maybe a little strange. But here's the deal. We get pastors up here all the time. That's the first time we ever got a guitar player. That joke, my uncle had him tell that joke standing next to his coffin in the cemetery at his burial service. So that gives you an idea of my uncle's personality. And one other little thing, the last things that I heard from him, uh, called him on the phone about 10 days before he passed and he said to me, David, I'm ready to go. I've made my peace with the Lord. I've been able to play a lot of music and I have the best wife in the world. Those are the last things I heard him say. And as I mentioned, he'd been a mentor my whole life. He would give me uh, recordings to listen to of jazz guitarists. He would give me instruction books to go home and, and study. 
and he would show me things. And it occurred to me when I got off the phone, he just mentored me again showed me how to finish this race that I'm in, in his footsteps. And so this guitar to me is like a passing of the mantle. It represents to me a lot more than just, just a guitar. It represents carrying on in a tradition that, that was passed on to me. My family has a long music tradition. My grandfather, my uncle's father, was a tenor banjo player in the first radio orchestra west of the Mississippi back in the 1920s. And so this tradition is just kind of kind of passed on. And we went through a process where when I was a kid, my brother and I, we would uh, just sit with our, with our mouths open, listening to Bernie and my other uncle, Sam, listening to them play. And um, then as we began to progress a little bit we began to be able to participate with them and we started having these family music jams every time we could get together which was usually a summer vacation and eventually it got to the point as we got better and better and began to develop our own things I remember hearing him one time say how do these guys think of stuff like that because we were playing different music than he was which really impressed me really encouraged me that he would say that and then later in life, when we would get together and have the jam sessions, he began to pull back and just listen. He began to just sit and not play at all and basically handed over to us the central role in these uh, jam sessions. And we did some family things where there were younger musicians who were there and we were an example to them. And so this, this represents a... Um, a mantle being passed on to me and I, I named the guitar Pearl for two reasons. One is that my grandmother's name was Pearl and secondly there's a story that Jesus told about a pearl of great price that uh, this merchant found and found it so desirable that he sold everything so that he could afford to have it because he saw value in it. And when this guitar became available, I did kind of the same thing. I didn't sell all of my guitars, but I looked around and I found several that maybe were meaningful at some point in time. But I thought, in comparison to this, I don't need that. I can live without that. And I sold those in order to be able to get this because it meant so much more to me. It was so much more valuable. And Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like that where you come along and when you discover it and you discover, wow, here is a life. Here is something that is so much better than what I thought was important, what I thought would be fulfilling, that you become willing to just leave those things behind and go in this other direction and follow Jesus into his kingdom. And so I'm going to take Pearl and play a song for you, a little instrumental piece, so you can kind of hear her voice a little bit more. And uh, in order to honor my uncles and uh, thank them for their mentorship, and it's a little song that's just called Pearl's Theme or The Pearl of Great Price. I'm gonna have to go get my sunglasses on in order to have the right appearance and the right vibe, and I'll be back in just a second.
Pearl, my special favorite. 